I want to discuss reincarnation. With Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. What's he talking about? Go that way until the end be. For thou shalt rest in standing thy law at the end of the day. So what did he tell Daniel? Oh, you, you want to talk about Daniel in, in reincarnation? We can do that. No, let's go there. Okay, Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, after you sleep in the dust, what's the next thing to happen to you? Is it reincarnation? Notice you said go to Daniel. I've been wanting to discuss, I'm like a pit bull on reincarnation. You were like a chihuahua and a poodle. Now listen, discuss reincarnation. You went to Daniel, so I went to Daniel. You can't even take Okay, let's go through this. After you sleep in the dust, what happens next? You awake. You don't get reincarnated. You're Daniel 12, 2. You awake to the truth. It doesn't say that. It says you go to the dust of the earth, then you awake to everlasting life. My friend, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 also proves that. All right, Shalom. This is our one by Nyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Kaal Halayim, La Yahawa, Bahashim Yahawashai, Bahashim Harakah Kodash, Mahamath. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. Shalom to you, Akim, Nagwatim, and children. That believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Um, this is Matthew 13 and 12. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. All right, now this is um the reason I'm going to start with the scriptures is it's clear what we're seeing on the screen in that prior video I just showed uh, with the boy Slow Cab or No 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 Class Malone, what they call Vocab Malone. He ain't got no class, you know. Now, um, the reason I want to bring the scriptures out, the scripture out, because the word parable just means a mystery. And the scriptures have become a spiritual mystery all right the wisdom of this world we get this this is first corinthians 1 and 20. where is the wise where is the scribe all right let's talk about of our nation where is the disputer of this world that would be people like um vocabulary have not yahweh made foolish the wisdom of this world all right so the wisdom of this world and especially of this age in the time where Babylon is in rulership, America, the word Babel means confusion. So, um, you know, uh, so wisdom, uh, the wisdom of this world is foolishness. And the people like uh, uh, No Class Malone, they go to um, seminary schools and shit and in these universities. And they become dumber than they were before. They were already stupid anyway, and blind and, and heathenistic. But they become even worse. All right, they become emboldened in their wickedness. People like uh, Vocab. This is Amos three and seven. Surely Yahweh will will do nothing, but He revealeth His secret unto His servants, the prophets. So, all right, so these are his secrets. The secret. Secrets kept from the world. Now I want to get into those, one of those mysteries that uh, um, no class Malone can't understand. And what he brought out, he brought out a few different scriptures. So I'm gonna make this a, um, I'm gonna call it what they call it, Operation Apologetic, right? So I'm gonna make it a a listing, so a catalog. But this is um, he went into John five and twenty nine. So let's get that. All right, this is what he brought out. They were speaking about reincarnation. And um, the brother, the young brother, um, spoke through the spirit. And he said, yo, you come back in your lot. They didn't even go too deep into it. They just cut him. Whoop. You know, they brought out um, Daniel 12 and 13. All right. He said, go thy way, Daniel. Stand thy lot. At the end of the day, they cut him quick. But I'm going to get into it, man, go in detail. This is John 5 and 29. It says, um, let's start from 28 to get the point. 
It says, marvel not at this, right? So that's the main thing he said. Don't marvel at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. All right? Shall hear his voice. That's important right there. Uh, the voice and the grave part. And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. All right. So now, um, just to give you a, a quick um, understanding of that. Let's get to um, the voice. All right. They shall hear his voice. Now, what it's talking about in the resurrection, all right, just to give you a plain outline, Yahweh Shai was resurrected from the dead, the physical dead, and taken up into the heavens on the right hand of the Father, and is kept in place as our hope in the heavens, right, untouched. And, uh, <clears throat> and now we, uh, ever since then, have died, come back to this earth, died, come back to this earth. Right, ready to meet him in these times now, where the spirit of wisdom has been given back to the same ones that belong to, the same ones that believed in Yahweh Shai then, they're going to be set up to believe in him today. The same ones that went against him, they're going to be set up to be blinded and kept in the dark in these days. All right, according to Yahweh Shai's memory of them, you see that all the ones that turned away now, um. So that's what it means. In these, in this time, they're gonna be in their lot and be destroyed, or they're gonna be part of that first resurrection of the nation of Israel. Big difference. All right, Yahweh Shai's resurrection didn't represent us individually um, dying and being risen up. It's talking about spiritual, us being spiritually dead, dying physically, yeah, but being born in a society where we're spiritually dead. And we're being raised up and called out of our graves and, and, and alive and resurrected with Yahweh Shai until the, until the physical resurrection to where the Lord completes the second covenant, which is putting the laws in our inward part when he arrives. All right, that's the first resurrection of our nation. So that's what this is talking about. So when you think of Yahweh Shai's resurrection, you have to think about our resurrection as a nation, the first fruits, the elect. Uh, getting his truth first and then being resurrected unto salvation. All right, many shall be called, but few shall be chosen. And in that day, you shall know who his chosen are. So those are the first fruits. All right. So it says this um, uh, in 29. And shall come forth that they have done good, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So they're going to be made to stand in damnation. All right, stand in their lot. The word resurrection. All right. This is the word resurrection. And it says anastasis, right? Which means a standing up again. All right. And that's the same thing that Yahweh Bashim uh spoke to Daniel. And that's what the brother was trying to explain to vocab slow ass. Slow cab. That's why I call him slow. Like the short bus. All right. No class Malone. It says uh, standing up again. And the nation of Israel is going to be caused to um, be exalted or stand up as a nation. And we're doing that today in the spirit. It causes us to what? Stand upon our feet. A great exceeding army. Through the spirit. Putting life into us. Breath into us. Giving us bones. Without bones, you can't stand up. All right. Gave us um uh, flesh. Gave us clothing. And this is all spiritual speaking. Gave us a covering. All right. And then after you have that soldier to stand, you have to give it what? A mission. And their mission is this work. A direction. A journey. It says a standing up again, man. And that's what Yahweh Shai did. He, he was um, put to death, but he stood up again. It was taken up to the heavens. The nation that the, the ones that stood with Yahweh Shai, they're gonna stand again upon this earth. And that's what that's who we are today. All right. Ultimately, until the resurrection of our of the first fruits of our nation being uh exalted into glory. All right, now right here you see it says um 
uh, 29, and shall come forth, and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, right? And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now, that word damnation, you think it's like some eternal judgment. Now, what it's talking about is damnation, meaning what? Judgment. All right, judgment and damnation is, is, is the same word right here in this verse, in this chapter. All right, it'd be Greek 2920. All right, uh, it says decision by extension, a tribunal, justice, divine law, a separation, sundering separation, a judgment. All right, so the righteous judgment. So they're going to be resurrected unto judgment. So the Lord going to judge them as being evil. Two-thirds of our people. So that's what that's talking about. I'm going to read it again, then we're going to move on. John 5 and 29. And uh, 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And that's not talking about coming out of the ground, the dirt, you know, the erratas out of the earth. That's talking about being born again uh, on this earth as as children, um, and, and standing in your lot, being a, being in this truth in these last days unto salvation. And the wicked people like Vocab are going to be doing what they were doing back then, even during the time of the apologetics, during the time of Greece. <clears throat> All right. This is Baruch 1 and 19. Now, in that verse in 28, um, John 5 and 28, where it said, uh, uh, many that be in the grave shall hear his voice. Now, this is his voice right here. It says Baruch 1 and 19. Since the days that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt unto this present day, we have been disobedient unto the Lord, our power, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Wherefore, the evils cleaved unto us and the evils have cleaved, cleaved unto our people. That's how you can tell who the children of Israel are because the curses, um, because of the curses, Deuteronomy. Um, are on our people, right, the children of Israel today. And the curse, which Yahweh appointed by Moses, his servant at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of Egypt to give us a land that floweth with milk and honey, like as it is to see this day. All right. And that milk will be what increase and also uh, healing of our nation, um, of our basically second covenant. All right, and giving us that land and increase of a nation. So it says this. Nevertheless, we have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord, our power, according to all his all the words of the prophets. All right. So the words that the prophets speak in prophecy. Are the words of the voice of Yahweh, which is Yahweh Shai, all right, the word. Um, whom he sent unto us, man. So the Lord sent prophets unto the people every time before he destroyed kingdom or deliver his people. All right. Whenever he's re ready to render judgment. This is John 5 and 28 again. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Now in the graves shall hear what the prophets all right. He said, what? His sheep shall hear his voice. All right. Now we know the word uh, grave means what? Sheol. Um, when you're dealing with the, the uh, uncomfortable position or um, a hellish condition, you know, helpless or being what? In the, in the ground. But this grave right here is different. Let's get this word. All right. It says, and which are all in the grave shall hear his voice. So that's Greek 314, uh, 34, 19. So like a Greek 34, 19. 
It says, uh, men, 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 ne, nemeon, right? Weird ass word. So it says a remembrance, all right? A cenotaph, a place of interment. So those that are in that in the place of interment shall come up out of that, right? The graves, their sleep, their sleep state, the dead state. This is Second Peter 2 and 4. For if Yahweh spared not the angels that sin, today will be called Israelites, but cast them down to hell, all right? So down to what? A low, con a low condition and sorrow and torment upon this earth. And we left our first estate. So now we're being put back above that first estate, all right? Being made to stand again, resurrected back up. And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. All right. And the elect are going to be reserved unto life. And the wicked are, that do evil are going to be reserved unto damnation or what you would call judgment. All right. I'm going to bring this out. Um, actually, so like I said, this was um, talking about Daniel uh, standing in his lot. Uh, in the last days, I said that was this scripture earlier, 12 and 13, but it's not. All right, 12 and 2. All right, I just want to be sure because I can't remember if I said it was 12 and 2 or 12 and 13, but it's actually 12 and 13. So I'm going to read 12 and 2 real quick. This is Daniel 12 and 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So that's a parable. That's saying that they're going to be set up to do the work on this earth. They're going to awaken these times uh, from the dust, which is uh, darkness, right? Deal with being blind or low. Many that sleep in the dust that's in the graves of the earth shall awake, man. Some to everlasting life, all right, awake to the truth and then go on into the kingdom. Um, and some to shame and everlasting contempt, meaning they'll be in this time of uh, being wicked 2,000 years ago, set up to be wicked in these times. All right, and they're going to wait to sh shame and everlasting contempt because they're going to realize that they were part of the two thirds. You understand? So that's that's not talking about um, whatever the hell slow cab, no class Malone is talking about. All right, he probably think he's talking really talking about rising up out of the dust, and they're going to wake up on the last day and just be blown up. That don't make sense. The Lord says the ones that die in the truth, they're going to be with him and with him in the heavens. And he's going to bring him, them with him. The ones that, on the earth, they're going to be taken up into the chariots. All right. So what it's talking about here is a parable. It's a mystery. It's a secret. And the Lord is saying the ones that, that awake out of sleep. In these days, going to awake to everlasting life. And that's what we, Yahweh Ratazah, have done, uh, are experiencing. And some to shame and everlasting contempt, people like Nate and these church folks and whatever, two-thirds of our people. All right, Khan, this is uh, beautiful, man. Uh, Isaiah 52, right? He talk about awaking, right? Awaking. They ain't talking about thriller and shit, breaking out of the damn caskets and coming out of the ground. That's not what he's talking about. All right. Yahweh Shai already did that. He came out of the grave and went up to the heavens. What represents us being resurrected as a nation today in this truth and taken up into the heavens. Isaiah 52 and 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. Put on thy covering. All right. And that goes into Ezekiel 37. I'm probably closing with that. Um, put on that beautiful garments. That means the covering of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, and our nationality. O Jerusalem, 
the holy city. For, for henceforth, there shall no more come into thee un, the uncircumcised and unclean. That's talking about spiritually today. All right. But in the kingdom, all the nation of Israel is going to be circumcised and clean. You know, clean from sin. They're not going to be in the uh, chains of darkness. Chains of darkness represents sin, sinful flesh. All right. Not having wisdom or, or light. Being in the dust. It says, what? Shake thyself from the dust. Arise. That's be what? To resurrect. To arise. And sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter, daughter of Zion. All right? So loose thyself from the from the yoke, the, in the chains of the, the darkness. Ezekiel 37 and 29. Now it's talking about, um, I'm going to get that scripture first. This is John 5 and 29. No, 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. All right, so... If they were wicked then, they're gonna be they're gonna wake in these times to being wicked <laughs> and being destroyed. And uh and basically a judgment, and you're gonna make them stand in the lot of the wicked. Right? Instead of being like Daniel, like the brothers brought out earlier. This is Daniel twelve and thirteen. Well, but go thy way till the end be, man. So, um, and if you read, if you understand Daniel, the book of Daniel, around Daniel 12 is when Daniel uh, gave up his life, all right, when he died. And he went to the spirit room. The angels came to visit him. Yahweh Shai came to visit him. He had saw the captivity of Israel, uh, 586 BC. He saw us get delivered from that. All right, he saw different captivities with Cyrus the Great, and Darius the Mede. All the way up to us being called back to Jerusalem. Now, um, so um, the Lord told him to go his way, meaning what? To take that long journey into paradise. To, he died. All right, lived out the rest of his life and died. And uh, gave up the ghost. And he's standing on this earth today in this truth to, to receive a reward from the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh for thou shalt rest, see? Thou shalt rest. So he perished, he died. And stand in thy lot at the end of the days. So we fell asleep. Our nation, 70 AD was a great falling away. All right, to where we all fell asleep. But he said what? Go thy way and stand in thy lot. That's resurrection. A standing again, right? So let's get that scripture. John 5 and 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which that all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. I'm going to get the scripture on graves in a second. And shall come forth. See, shall come forth. People like Daniel. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil, so Sadducees, Pharisees, scoffers, right? They have done evil, people like Esau, slow cab alone, unto the resurrection of judgment or damnation, man. All right, I'm going to end with this. He said, what? Um, those that hear his voice shall come out of the graves. Ezekiel 37 and 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith Yahweh power, come from the four winds, O breath. The breath is this word. This is um Wisdom of Solomon 7, 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion, more moving than the wind. All right. So it says this. She passeth and goeth through all things. By reason of her pureness, 
for she is the breath of the power of Yahweh. All right, so that's that breath. He said, breathe on these slain, man. We were slain. We were destroyed for lack of knowledge, destroyed uh, uh, through darkness. And it says, for she, wisdom, is the breath of the power of Yahweh. And a pure influence to be influenced purely, right? Flowing from the glory of, of the Almighty, therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. This is Ezekiel 37 and 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith Yahweh power, come forth, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, man, that they may live. All right, so his breath, the Lord's word, his influence um, has been, um, you know, breathed upon the slain of Israel. All right, like a spiritual CPR. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army, man. All right, so I'm going to read this. It says, uh, so he said, he calls us to stand upon our feet. That's the resurrection. But ultimately, um, you still don't know who the chosen are. Many shall be called, but few shall be chosen. So his voice was spread out throughout the whole earth. He even called um, the, the Russians to, to play their part in World War Three. Esau to start moving. The Lord's spirit is moving and through the angels. All right. So upon the elect, they're going to be called to do this work and ultimately receive salvation. The wicked are going to be called in their way. People like ISUPK, they teaching false doctrine, blaspheming the brotherhood or blaspheming the spirit and treating the brotherhood badly. All right. People that claim to be in this truth, they treat people like shit. You know, no morals, no spiritual morality. You know what I mean? So, um, people that's in these churches, so on and so on. They're 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 in their lot, but the hopeful elect are going to stand like a great, exceeding army upon this earth. And the only thing dividing us from each other is the lands, the the distance, the um the lines that Esau draws on the damn earth. But if you go out of space, those lines ain't there between the countries. So are we truly separated? No. You know, and ultimately we're on the same earth. And even if some are in the heavens, we're still connected through the spirit of Yahweh by Shimei All right. So now it says this, Ezekiel 37 and 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived, man. So some are going to awake to life and some are going to awake to what? damnation judgment and that's now all right and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army now the word started being preached in america since the uh, 60s with alba bivens all right then he said unto me son of man these bones are the whole house of israel that's a cut on you vocab slow cap no cat no class malone he said, what? The bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, but only one third in the 144 are going to wake up of the house of Israel. Two thirds going to be cut off and be set up for what? and To perish in the coming judgment. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. See that that's to be dead, that's to be uh, 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 in the graves. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh power, behold, my O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. All right, and that's the resurrection. That's that's the bringing us up out of the graves, meaning out of that sleep state causing life to come into us, and then ultimately bringing us into the land of Israel. 
and resurrecting us as a nation, causing us to stand upon the earth again. The tabernacle of David, King David, the throne of Yahweh by Shimei was shy upon this earth. All right, righteousness. He says what? He said, um, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh, but the wicked are going to know that they have done wickedly. And that's wisdom of Solomon chapter five. Some are going to wake to life and some are going to wake to death or judgment. All right. And the resurrection. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves or my people and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you. Deep, man. And ye shall live. See, they're going to be resurrected to life upon this earth. And shall place, and I shall place you in your land, and that's be resurrected as a nation. All right, given the second covenant. Then shall ye know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, saith Yahweh. All right, so the wicked, the righteous are going to stand. People like Daniel. All right, but the wicked are going to stand in their lot. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. It's two-thirds of our people. And even people like Vocab and, them, and the heathens. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, see that they're going to wait. It's going to be a realization moment to where they realize that they've been wicked. It says, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor, right? They see people like ISUBK, IUIC, they saying the RFID chip is not the mark of the beast. ISUBK, but now look, they talking about pushing the mark of the beast. So everything that the apostles been pushing, the brotherhood been pushing, the true, sincere, um, hopeful elect, you know, Akim, have been pushing. These other idiots going to realize they've been going after the ways of Satan, all right? Especially two thirds of Jake's that any churches in Islam and so on and so on. It says, We fools accounted his life madness. See, foolishness of this world. In fact, that, that's the perfect way to end it. All right. And his and his end to be without honor, man. How is he numbered among the children of Israel? And his lot is among the saints. All right, his lot, just like Daniel, his lot is among the saints. All right, set up for these times, man. That's his lot to be that, to be resurrected into life. And you idiots, you heathens, you two-thirds of our people are resurrected unto what? Judgment. All right, being judged, being destroyed for the, you know, to, for your evil ways. All right. And ultimately, the elect are going to be the first fruits of the resurrection. This is Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. See, that's the judgment. And I so judgment for the elect is going to be what? To rule. All right. To rule and to be part of the first resurrection. But the wicked, their judgment is going to be to be condemned. All right, condemnation or confounded. The word confounded means to be broken in pieces. I saw thrones and they that sat upon them. And the Lord told the brothers that he said, uh, uh, you shall sit upon thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what he told them 2,000 years ago. You see that? That they were going to be sitting on thrones in these times. And the Lord had to set that up. For us to get the truth first and then be exalted and lifted up, resurrected, all right? But resurrected in the truth first through his spirit, being brought to brought to life from, from being asleep amongst the dead, the congregation of the dead. Revelation 20 and 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and the judgment was given unto them. 
And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. And that was from 2,000 years ago. A lot of our people were beheaded for the truth. People like John, all right? Matthew, they were beheaded for um, uh, the, the testimony of Yahweh Shai. And even today, some may be beheaded, but the Lord said, touch not my anointed. But you're still going to have some martyrs, you know? But anyway, um, for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast. So the ones that gave diligence 2,000 years ago when Yahweh Shah was on the scene, they're going to be sitting on thrones real soon. This is prophecy. This is going to happen. All right. Um, and the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast. See, today, those same ones that were diligent then, and gave their life for the testimony of Yahweh Shai, all the way from the time um, of Yahweh Shai, all right, when, when he was crucified around 37, 38 uh, CE, all the way up until the time of Constantine. That's really when the, it was kind of sealed up of all the people that believe in Yahweh Shai. All right, when it, it was um, persecuting the believers. And then you still had uh, the, the fake Christianity started creeping up with Constantine and them. But anyway, so now it says those same people, those same believers are back here today, just like during the time of the Maccabees, 168 BC, where that sister was, um, was killed uh, and the brothers were killed for not selling out and eating pork. And the lady said to her son, she said, I know we're going to let me get that, man. All right, this is 2nd Maccabees 7 and 14. This happened around 168 BC when uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, the Edomite, the heathen that the scriptures call him in Maccabees, he was trying to force our people to eat pork. All right, our people didn't want to do it because swine is unclean and it's a sin. So um, this is what the this is what one of the men told Antiochus. All right, this brother was being tortured and mangled, and the brother was being boiled, and uh, in in, in cooking pots. So, you know. Now it says this that that Antiochus was not going to have a resurrection to life. He was going to have a resurrection to death, to judgment, to eternal, to fire. And what, whatever jakes of our people that were selling out at that time, they were going to, they were going to be back here as well. Uh, being resurrected unto what judgment to death, to, to uh, it, the nuclear fire, man, world war three upon this earth, plagues and famines. All right. And at that time in 168, our people were being what? Hellenized, being uh, uh, forced into Greek customs and worship and philosophies and culture and also their language. It says, verse 14, Second Maccabees 7 and 14. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, it is good being put to death by men. To look for hope from Yahweh, Yahweh to be raised up again by him. See that? Not as soon as he was in the ground, he was raised back up. No, it's talking about that he died at that moment and that he knew in the future he was going to be raised back up upon this earth again. Just like Job talked about being in these last days. Um, it is good being put to death by men to look for hope from Yahweh to be raised up again by him. As for thee, as for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. All right. So they're going to be resurrected to uh, judgment and damnation. All right. So I'm going to get this last part right here about this sister. Matter of fact, I'm not going to get it. I'm going to end it because it's getting too long, this lesson. Uh, second, as, second Maccabees 7, if you read it all the way down to the bottom, about the woman and speaking to her son, she was speaking about reincarnation as well and about Antiochus Epiphanes being reincarnated uh, to judgment, all right, to being destroyed.
and put in slavery. All right, Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them. So when it speaks about being resurrected to life and resurrected to judgment or damnation, this is these are the brothers that are resurrected to life. All right. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. For the word of Yahweh, so the spirit go, leave, left the body, went up to the heavens, even during the time of Yahweh Shai being on the earth with Peter, Paul, and all the prophets, disciples, all right, there were all the martyrs. The, the, their spirit went up to the Father, just like during the time of the Maccabees, all right? They had a hope of salvation and being resurrected in these last days. It's just, anyway, you know, um, now it says, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not, worship the beast neither his image so today they're back on this earth and those same people are not going to worship nato or esau's system the, all right their whole setup the new world order then they're, they're not going to what it says neither his image his system neither have received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands plural so that's talking about the rfid chip that's these times today so the same ones back then they're back here today and they're not going to receive that chip and they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shai a thousand years so they're going to to reign is to what to gain the kingdom you see that to reign with somebody is the taking of the kingdom and gaining it so they're going to reign with Yahweh Shai a thousand years going to be built up and Esau is going to be um have hardcore punishment, judgment, and hell upon earth for a thousand years. All right? Until we go on to the next phase of, of Yahweh Shai's kingdom after a thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. All right? So even these heathen nations, not talking about Esau, the ambassador of the heathens, I'm talking about these other nation, heathen nations. They're going to get some form of status or living upon this earth. All right. But they're going to be in servitude to the house of Israel. After a thousand years, but for a thousand years, they're going to get their ass whooped too. That says, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. So that's talking about the resurrection of the nation of Israel, the covenant, the second covenant. On such, the second death have no power. See, the second death represents what? The nuclear missiles. The first death was the flood. The second death is the nuclear uh, fire. So on such that take part in the first resurrection, the, the first fruits of Israel, they're not going to be touched by the coming fire and destruction and adversity and the chip and so on and so on. All that have paid the price and been martyred for this truth 2,000 years ago. They're going to be back here today, resurrected into the truth from the spirit, from the dead, spiritually dead. And they're going to be ultimate, ultimately be resurrected as the sons of God upon in the heavens and on this earth. All right. So the tabernacle of David, the pillar. See that new Jerusalem All right, in the one third, 144,000 and one third. And with the wicked, they're going to stand in their lot, resurrected uh, uh, for wickedness. All right. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death, the fire, nuclear fire, have no power. But they shall be priests of Yahweh and of Yahweh Shai and shall reign with him a thousand years. So they're going to be priests in these times. He says he chose through the foolishness of preaching for us to be saved. All right. So, and being the priest of Yahweh Bashim Shai, doing his service in the, now and in the kingdom. And, all right. So, with that, I'm going to say, uh, so I'm going to read it. All right. Just end it with this recap John 5 and 29. 28. John 5 and 28. 
Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Right? The sheep hear his voice. And shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And the scriptures say he's going to descend from the heavens with a shout. All right. And those that hear his voice shall be like him. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to say, come up hither. But the rest are going to be pushed to the left with, this, with the, uh, the sheep to the right and the goats to the left. So two thirds of our people are going to be in that number. All right. So with that, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to read this last piece. All right. And, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection, unto the resurrection of damnation. So they're going to stand in damnation. <laughs> All right, so with that, I'm going to say, Shalom.